Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, hearing. Okay. Good morning. <laughs> there's a uh, there's some problem with uh, Doctor Zohan Moya uh, audio. Okay. You will not be able. Yeah, but I'll be chairing the event, so hopefully there shouldn't be any problem. Mm. Has our speaker signed in? Here? Oh, I okay. believe that's what I'm checking now. Dr. Rahim, join. I don't think he has joined us yet. No, no, no. Ragim, have you joined? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seems he was not yet joined. Yeah, yeah, he's joined. Not yet. Uh, now we have participants, but his name's not.
Dr. Rahim has signed in. Signed in. Okay. Uh. Yes, Dr. Dr. Rahim, good morning. Rahim is it? okay. Doctor Rahim. Yeah. Shall we start now? Should we start? Yeah. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this Saturday weekly lecture. Tonight, by Asia Pacific School Scientist. Uh, to start the event, I would like to call upon uh, Dr. Prat Lingam to give this pres uh, presidential address as well as introduce the speaker for today. Thank you. Today, in our midst, Dr. Rahim Kamaluddin is here. He is Faculty of UKM Malaysia, the National University of Malaysia. He is our Asia Pacific School Psychology Association Secretary, well versed with the zoinal delinquency. He is a person who has conducted a lot of studies related to this field of study and his research area is to studying the delinquencies, especially is helping the juvenile delinquency issues. And apart from that, in Malaysia, he is a noted psychologist helping in various organizations and also for the policy makers. He is a committed researcher, educationist, and helping him to whomever they may require his services. Today he is in our midst. He is going to talk about what are all the theoretical aspects behind this general delinquency and how this can be taken into consideration for the COVID-19 crisis. This is his focus. He will enlighten us how and what are all the intricacies involved in this area of study. Now may I request Dr. Rahim to come on the line. Well, friends, this Asia Pacific uh, is uh, still able to connect due to some technical issues. Another uh, few minutes, he will be with us. Uh, Dr. Ragim, you can join with us. Till the time, you have to understand what is this Asia Pacific School Psychology Association. We have Indian School Psychology Association in India. Likewise, Sri Lanka is having a association, Sri Lankan School Psychology Association. In Nepal, the School of, School of Psychologist Association and Bangladesh School Psychology Society. And likewise, in other countries too, having the 
Psychology Association for taking care of the children. Then we thought these neighboring countries can be united and we can form an organization in that respect. 2019 January, we formulated this Asia Pacific School Psychology Association headquarters at Malaysia. Myself is the founder president for this organization and Dr. Rahim is the secretary. Mr. Kanesan is the treasurer. And each and every country is having the state country secretaries. In India, Dr. Janet Fernandez is there and Sri Lanka, uh, Dr. M. M. Samim, then Japan, Michiko Ishikawa, then Nepal, Narendra Singh, Bangladesh, uh, Madam Kanam, and Bangladesh is having a vice president, a Professor Kamaluddin, then from China, Mr. Nazir is the our joint secretary in Thailand, Bangladesh, no, sorry, Thailand, Pankak, Dr. Santosh Moganan is our country secretary. Again, for Asia Pacific School Psychology Association, we have an international journal. We are publishing from Pankak. Dr. Lutsi is the editor of the journal. In such a way, we are having, you know, active members from Indonesia. There are 19 members from Indonesia and Taiwan, Philippines, uh, two or three members from Australia, New Zealand. Like that, uh, it spreads over more than 200 active members in this organization. Based on this foundation, we are able to conduct our first international conference in the early 2020 before the COVID-19 crisis. We are able to conduct the conference in Sri Lanka, Colombo with the help of National Institute of Education, Colombo. Dr. Rahim is here. Rahim, you are able to talk. In that respect, you know, we are having another uh, two, three events, major events scheduled. One is in Malaysia, another one is Bangkok with the help of Assumption University, Thailand. As and when this COVID was over, we are planning to have this, you know, uh, real-time programs. Before that, we are having an international webinar on 2nd and 3rd of July 2020, having the concept helping children at home. We are all thinking of how we can help the children at school. Now this is a crisis. We are Now we are changing our concept, how we can help the children at home. Mm. As far as this registration is concerned, more than 1,600 people have registered for this uh, two-day event. Uh, this is a uh, full-day events. Dr. Rahim is ready. Dr. Rahim? Yeah, your voice. You can unmute your mic. Yeah. Likewise, uh, this uh, association is helping, uh, you know, right now around 19 countries are participating in these events. That is possible only because of the active participation from the participants. Uh, Dr. Game. Yeah. Later, may I request Dr. Rahim to take over the mic?
Is it okay, Rahim? Yeah, please proceed. You no, know, your voice, you can raise your volume. Okay, am, I, am I audible now? Yeah, audible. Yeah, yeah. Proceed, proceed. Okay. So uh, I'm extremely sorry because I have to use my handphone because suddenly I couldn't connect my laptop with uh, uh, three bags. So sorry for that. So I will send the PPT slide to the uh, to our president, yeah, uh, Dr. Ram, Prof. Ramalingam, uh, to share with all the. Uh, and today I am going to talk about juvenile. Frequency, yeah, frequency, and and this field, I mean, this topic is much related. Yeah, this is very much related to school psychology because as a as a teacher, as a school psychologist, often uh, uh, encounter students some uh, behavioral problems, especially at council. So therefore, it's very important for all of yeah, for school psychologists, for criminologists, for teachers, for educators to understand yeah, the, the nature, the root causes juvenile delinquency. Before I would like to thank uh, Prof. Uh, for giving me this opportunity to share with all of you. And I would like to request uh, the participants to uh, mute the audio and hear some, some echoes. Please mute your audios. Your respected uh, participants, All right? Yeah. Mark? Yeah. If not on it, uh, please one uh, assign or please alert me. Yeah. All right. So, what juvenile delinquency is about? Yeah. As we know, crime is 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 an offense committed by the adults. Yeah. It is very wrong for us to label uh, it children as criminals yeah since they are protected under child act yeah and it is not ethical to call them as criminal therefore we use other terms yeah other uh, terms to address those who committed uh, offenses we, we then label them as for example delinquents yeah delinquents rather than criminals so what is juvenile delinquency yeah juvenile delinquency can be described as offenses yeah, uh, committed by underage, yeah, committed by children. Yeah. In Malaysia, Malaysia, uh, the recent statistics uh, in 2019, uh, the Malaysian Prison Department released that announced that uh, uh, account, uh, uh, approximately 8.5 percentage from the prison population are those who are under one yeah 8.5 approximately so although it's very low but this is i think this is um something we have to look about it it is very cheap as well yeah so eight thousand when we convert in figures it will be around thousand yeah around six thousand uh juvenile delinquents are placed in merchant prison department and what are the what are the crimes that committed by the kids nowadays? Yeah, uh, offenses rather uh, as offenses rather than uh, of course one of the most perplexing problem in Malaysia and so globally is drug abuse. Yeah, drug abuse considered as the uh, serious offenses committed uh, uh, by the children, and in Malaysia. Uh, one of the reasons, yeah, one of the reasons by Chief found that the youngest drug addict in Malaysia, the youngest drug addict in Malaysia is five years old. Yeah, a five old kid uh, uh, agreed that he had consumed cannabis yeah, at the age of five. And uh, other cases as well, for example, at the age of that, for example, yeah, they are, there are kids are actually consuming uh, synthetic drugs like 
effort team. So the team name is also known as AX. Uh, student, am I audible? Yeah, audible. Proceed. Audible. Proceed. All right. Thank you. So uh, uh, nowadays the kids uh, start to take synthetic drug. Yeah, they take drug like methamphetamines, ecstasy, like MDMA, uh, and five. All these uh, they are taking. And besides that, we also have encountered in Asia there are a number of uh, portion, a significant portion of children uh, actually involved in sexual crimes, uh, sexual crimes, especially in statutory rape. Yeah, Malaysia, uh, the the age uh, to in uh, intersect uh, intercourt uh, is uh, six. Yes, yeah, six, the minimum age. So there, uh, kid. Uh, actually involved uh, in uh, sexual relationship and were eventually charged in a uh, statutory rape. And we also have uh, cases uh, parents who have committed uh, uh, robbery, yeah, robbery, stealing, and so on. So uh, I think uh, they are actually the nature. If we look at the nature of, they are almost. Similar, almost same, like the one committed by the adult. And surprisingly, their kid are also uh, charged uh, or also involved in murder and also attempted murder at the age of 15, 16, and so on. This is definitely complex. And really with the emergence of social media, with the emergence of. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Ragim, uh, for intervention. Uh, one minute. Yes. Uh, uh, Miss Grace. Grace. Grace Lalchwangi. Uh, uh, the worst. You can you can make this uh, viewer screen. No, it is viewers, live uh, wait, no, no, no. I have to uh, you can to... make the uh, you, viewer screen. You can uh, put it uh, right in the screen. It is going to the uh, no uh, YouTube. Your offline is going there. You can make it a viewer screen. Wait, I think Moya will have to do this. No, you check your, uh, no, instead of putting your yeah, yeah. Uh, view, you can make it mm. a Dr. Ragim's view in your screen. Is it clear? Please proceed, Dr. Ragim, please proceed. Let her yeah, yeah. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. So uh, now, all right, uh, to those conventional offenses, conventional offenses, for example, what they meant as drug abuse, sexual crime, theft, theft, and so on. All right now, with the uh, uh, various technology, yeah, uh, advance in the technology as well as um, uh, emergence of various social media platforms, uh, kids, yeah, kids, teenagers, they are. Uh, inclined towards cyberbullying. Yeah? Cyberbullying seems to be an uh, alarming uh, social problem among teenagers. Yeah? Among teenagers in Malaysia. I, I believe that happening uh, happens in your country as well. Uh, recent statistics uh, released of the research team, we found out that out of three, there's a one uh, individual are uh, being cyberbullying, uh, being the victim of cyberbullying. Yeah, I think that is one of the emerging uh, trend uh, in juvenile frequencies of bullying. And now, what actually kids? Yeah, what well, these children involved in crime or involved in offensive? For example, theft, involved in uh, gangs, drug trafficking, drug abuse. Why? Yeah. So, as sociologists, as a as teacher educators, we need to understand the theoretical background. Yeah, the theoretical background. What made a what, what made a child to involve in juvenile delinquency? Therefore, I would like to uh, have the participants three uh, theories, yeah, three main theories, with all, so that you can understand it. And then, yeah, the one that no. I'm sharing with you, with a few. No, it, make the screen. Uh, we, uh, no, present that screen. Yeah. 
Yeah. You can name, make this a presenter screen. In the YouTube, you are going your. Uh, you can press the uh, Your screen oh, is black. Right. Screen. So, uh, okay. So, GL is going. Uh, so, I'm going to explain that. Uh, explain the theoretical screen. background. It is very un very essential for all of us to understand no, why uh, a child involved in uh yeah, in the I I he or she involved in uh crime yeah thank you so uh this is actually uh one of the prominent theory criminology but i think it would be uh suitable for all of us to understand yeah uh, to, to get to know in detail about theory this theory is known as social structure theory yeah social structure theory and under this structure theory, there are actually three theories that I'm going to explain. Yeah, the first one is social disorganization theory. First one is social disorganization theory. The second one, strain theory. Strain theory. The third one is cultural deviance theory. Yeah. So this theory is actually applicable to most of the offenses committed by juvenile delinquents. And later, after this presentation, I will email this to our, uh, our president can share these notes. Uh, the first is social disorganization theory. Yeah. In this social uh, disorganization theory, this is more about the neighborhood. Uh, this uh, theory, social disorganization theory, it explains uh, the condition of the neighborhood. Precisely, deteriorated neighborhood. Deteriorated neighborhood. For example, I, I would like to uh, uh, some um, uh, make it as a, as, a, as a case study so that it will be very easy for all of you to understand, uh, to, to grab uh, the gist of this theory. For example, uh, a, a for example, uh, Ramu, we just kid as Ramu, yeah? Ramu is brought up yeah, by a uh, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a neighborhood, right? Which surrounding neighborhood uh, uh, with uh, deteriorate infrastructure, yeah? Uh, very high rate unemployment, very low level of social uh, control, yeah? There is a very poor social control. In neighborhood, if for example, if people uh, throw any rubbish, no one is there to voice out. If someone uh, 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 fighting, if a group of uh, fighting each other, there is no one to actually to stop them. So that that is what we call as poor social control. Yeah? So when a, when when Ramu uh, raised up, when Ramu is uh, brought up in this type of uh, situation, yeah, in this in this. Type condition yeah w whatever that he is seeing all right it will be part of his not as 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 from the from the psychological and sociological theory is a of uh, theory right that he observes for example that in, in that environment uh there, there are drug trafficking for example activities are going on so see paul he observing all this so this will be a part of norm yeah? To Ramu, yeah, to Ramu, and then uh, because of low social control, because of low educational status of the people around, all right, the importance, uh, the very less importance will be given to the to the children to achieve in terms of academic, to empower his talent or to empower his skills. Yeah. So now I would like to uh, tell, yeah, this this organize this organize. Uh, community, yeah? this disorganized neighborhood will eventually will, uh, implicate yeah? anti-social behavior in anti-social behavior in Ramu if if there is no protective factor for or if there is no intervention given to Ramu. Yeah? What are the protective factors? For example, parenting style. If Ramu, although Ramu is raised in a very uh, disorganized community or disorganized neighborhood, but uh, most parents are the one giving importance to uh, education, for example, giving, uh, 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 for example, they are actually following authoritarian parenting styles, for example, good parenting style. So that can protect Ramu from 
engaging in uh, antisocial activities. But if there is no protective factors, Ramu is placed in this this community. He Ramu most probably will turn into a juvenile delinquent one day. Yeah. So another these are indicators that I have from my PowerPoint. Uh, first is of course the community is in in. In uh, social disorganization theory, the community is seen or is characterized as disorganized. Yeah, that is one. Second, there is breakdown in social control. There is no one to control each other. There is no moral values. Uh, 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 there are no moral values uh, uh, followed by the people around. Yeah? And there are high level of school dropouts. Since they are no, uh, not giving priority important to education, yeah, and then level of uh, unemployment, yeah, and deteriorating infrastructure, deteriorating infrastructure, and of course, uh, single parent families as well as the prevalence of domestic violence is very high over there. So this is what we call we characterize as disorganized neighborhood. Or organized community, organized society. Yeah, that is the first uh, theory. Yeah? Uh, and then the second theory, I would like to uh, all of you is strain theory. Yeah, so all these these three theories under the roof of social structure theory. The first one was social disorganization, as I explained. All right, the key part is the neighborhood is deteriorated. The uh, infrastructure is deteriorated. Poor social control, poor of unemployment, high level of uh, education dropout, school drops, high prevalence of domestic violence, and so on. Is the first one. Yeah. So I hope uh, all of you uh, are with me. Yeah. The second one is Spain theory. Yes, yeah? Spain theory. Yeah, train. Uh, what we can, uh, in other words, in human context, train is some negative uh, emotional states. Yeah, negative emotional state. Yeah? Now I will explain. Now Ramu, the one. Uh, I, I this is a continuation. Ramu, who is brought up in disorganized society, community. Right. So, as a person, Ramu is definitely has his own goals. Am I right? As a person, all of us, yeah, uh, either we are uneducated, even we are uneducated, all of us has some aims in our uh, life, right? The aim could be education, uh, achieve high level of education. The aim could be wealth. The aim could be health, getting a good health status. The aim uh, could be uh, yeah. Everyone has aim in their own life. Similarly, the same thing goes to Ram. Ramu also has a has goals in his life. All right, and definitely people, teenagers or children in this disorganized neighborhood. Definitely, their aim will be what wealth. Money, right or not? Okay, they want to go for money. They want to be rich, and secondly, they want to be uh, someone who has power. They want people to recognize them as a, as a as a as a person. Uh, they they want people to respect them. Yeah. So these are the goals. Uh, uh, the, the the normal common goals of people like Ramu. Yeah, who raised in, in a disorganized. Good. But when uh, 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 reach his, uh, for example, he reaches adolescent stage. Yeah, Ramu from the kids who reach at the adolescent stage. So he will he will go for he wants to achieve the, the his goals his aims. But now there is no opportunity much opportunity for Ramu to achieve that particular goals. Am I right or not? For example, if we want to be great, for example, like us, like me, for example, if I want to be house. So I know with the education I have, with the skill I have, I can get some jobs and eventually I can some money and I can get a house. Am I? 
but people like Ratu, he don't get opportunities. He cannot uh, achieve a goal using conventional norms. Like for example, go to the university, getting a degree and uh, uh, a good job. So he he cannot achieve that because why? He is a dropout because his family, also his uh, uh, surroundings, neighborhood, giving less importance for education. Right, just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. I would like to plug it. the power. All right, I'm back. Right, and my audio is it all right? Yes, all right. Thank you, Miss. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, where I stop. Uh, okay, now Ramu, uh, Ramu, who who is dropped out, all right, uh, uh, primary school, right? He goes to the adolescent stage. He, he wants to achieve those aims. He want people look at him. The, he want founding people, right? Respect him. He wants to buy a big car. He wants to buy a big house. He wants to have a lot of money. So that is his goal. But he understand. He cannot get a good job because I, he 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 is not educationally qualified. He has no skills, no talent because the factory and the environment in food, all right. The people are giving less in, important in uh, uh, empowerment, talent empowerment, right? So when he realized, when Amu realized that he cannot be like others all right he a good cannot get a good job just others so what will do he will experience some negative emotional states which we call as strain yeah emotional states are like he might be frustrated he might be uh angry all right he might be uh jealous of other success, he might be uh, uh, what stress because he cannot achieve his goals using yeah we are conventional path yeah conventional journey like like go to a, a, a university get a good uh, in a degree getting a good job and so on. So now when he experiences the negative emotional states and at the same time he don't want to give up on goal. He still wants to look at him. He still wants to own a house, right? He realized that he cannot achieve using conventional path, pathway. So what he do, right? He, Ramu, take alternative pathway, right? Call that as and be alternative pathway. That alternative pathway is known as juvenile delinquency, all right? That alternative pathway is known as criminal pathway, more like a shortcut, yeah, more like a shortcut. So, therefore, so Rahu, he, since he cannot achieve his goals, he cannot have money. So, what he will do, he will join, for example, he can join, he will join gangs, yeah, illegal gangs, right, because that is alternative path that he can actually earn money in a faster way in an easier way so that alternative pathway. so this is what uh described in strain theory right is that clear is that clear all right maybe miss can respond on behalf of the participants all right let me repeat once again all right the first one was a social disorganization theory. A children, a child brought up a disorganized society, disorganized community, disorganized neighborhood. All right. What do you mean disorganized neighborhood? Low level of education, low level of in social control, high prevalence of domestic violence, high levels of school dropouts, high levels of uh, what? Uh, unemployment rate and uh, so many antisocial activities are 
or flourishing in that community is what we characterize as this neighborhood or this organizers so he raised when he brought up in this type of condition all right and to the second theory which is strain theory so when he moved into uh, when he reached the adolescent stage as per t yeah he has his own goals for example but he know that to reach his goal he couldn't attain or achieve his goals because he don't have good education he have uh, skills he don't have uh, the, the the talents that he has not empowered by parent or by the community right so therefore he couldn't achieve the 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 purpose using conventional norms therefore what he will do when he couldn't achieve he will experience negative emotional states which what we call as strain yeah frustrated angry stress so therefore he will take the alternative pathway all right so this is the phase it is process you know it's a process so this is the uh, where the cognitive distortion takes part this is where the pure motivation comes in. yeah i will explain later all right okay so they will take the alternative pathway achieve their goals alternative path is anti social pathway that pathway is to get the norm that pathway is a criminal pathway or criminal. so he will jump in uh, for example uh, he will in gambling for example he can join in uh, illicit gangs dr rahim yes uh, uh, another 5 uh, minutes is there how to do it can we restart how to yes, do it yes yeah. all right about to finish yeah all right please. so that pathway is known as strain strain uh, criminal pathway which is uh, crime the theory is cultural deviance theory all right cultural deviance theory, all right now for example all right this is actually a continuation from toshi's organization strain theory and then the third one is deviance theory all right and people ramu takes the alternative pathway which is for example illegal gangs for example he join gangs to to uh, to establish power to to gain a money yeah it away so in ramu all right when ramu is uh, uh, got into the adult phase we keep carry it all right not only ramu there are so many ramus in the society am i right there are so many ramus. so this criminal uh, path becomes part of subculture or part of their lifestyle in the particular community all right it is part, part of their norm it's part of their culture all right so this is what emphasize in cultural deviance theory whereby all right when it's already been part of culture in particular community will be formed by the youngsters this is what we can relate with familial history for example uh, ramu's father okay ramu is a, a gang leader illegal gang leader most probably ramu's son if he has no protective factors if he has given any intervention most probably he will be his father's footsteps because that is already a part of now so this is what i'm go uh, this is the the brief uh explanation about the uh, uh theoretical explanation what a person in, in, in juvenile delinquent so uh before i have uh touch on what are the crimes what are the offenses involved in the delinquents right i have shared with the statistics yeah and then i have teammate with under social factors on
Uh, I that PT will be of president. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah, thank you, friends. There is no time for today for the question hour. If you have any questions, you can send by WhatsApp so that Dr. Rahim is able to answer. And uh, now we are running short of time. Sir. With this, yes, sir. we are closing today's session. Whomever having the questions, you can okay. chat with our uh, WhatsApp or email. Thank you very much for joining with us. Thank you, Dr. Raghim. You have nicely explained the things with an example. And this is, you know, Thank you. very much uh, end of the hour so that the others can also learn. They can also collaborate with you. Mm, whatever the issues they may come across, that you can very well help them. So the response is uh, very huge. Uh, 111 people have joined in this uh, WebEx and you know, more than 200 people are watching with uh, YouTube. Uh, today we experimented with the YouTube. It was uh, so successful. In future programs, we can go n number of people. Mm, uh, that way, thank you very much.